We wanted to create a home that had a sense of understated elegance, one that flowed beautifully and had a sort of serenity to it that was hard to describe but incredibly alluring. I'm Bianca Porhio from Porhio Adams Architects and I was the lead architect on this project. The house is located atop of the hill in Bellevue Hill, which is about five minutes from Sydney CBD and it's oriented westward. Bellevue Hill is quite a leafy, established, older area, so you do um, have quite lovely mature trees um, along the streets and does give it that sort of established feel that people tend to like about Bellevue Hill. So the clients came to me wanting to do a hard landscaping project and some minor renovations at the back of the property. However, as we worked together, it became apparent that their requirements were more than that. And the brief grew organically and turned into quite a substantial renovation, as you can see. The original home was a 1940s um, bungalow that uh, unfortunately had been victim to lots of renovations over the years. So our challenge was to reinvigorate all of that detail. So we uh, kept a number of the original features. That included the front facade and keeping the front three rooms, which were formal spaces. Apart from that, we actually reintroduce new reproportioned openings into a number of the rooms in the house. We made um, a lot of the doorways taller and added in new skirtings and architraves that were all of a much more grand proportion. The heritage aspect to the home presented considerable structural challenge. We needed to hold the front part of the house up so that we could excavate substantially under the front left hand corner to accommodate the enlarged garage and passageway up into the home. We chose to explore the outside-inside planning approach, uh, not necessarily consciously, but think as uh, apparent in many old homes, the front part of the house is often quite internal and you know it has more of an interior kind of focus. And you're sort of in a room and then looking out through certain apertures. Whereas we created a dichotomous relationship between the back and the front. So when you're in this pavilion, you feel more like you're in a garden as opposed to being in a room. The specific features that encapsulate the inside-outside relationship are this large steel and glass pavilion. Also, looking up through the oculi in the living room, you can get a beautiful view of the eucalypt above the house. Another example of the inside-outside significance, I guess, is the master bedroom. Uh, it has a lovely balcony that's oriented west and has a lovely view towards the CBD. The steel and glass pavilion was uh, an addition that was kind of almost the opposite to what was previously here prior to the project. There was a lean-to which was very dark um, and unfriendly and quite sort of internally focused. And we wanted to kind of flip that and uh, open the space right out to the garden and actually maximise the connectivity to the, the surrounds and to the landscaping. Well, the landscaping was done by Danga Baron Smith um, and we collaborated with them. It's integral, really, to the design of the house. The terrace at the front of the house isn't something that we would typically do, but there was already an existing seating area out there. We just tried to make it feel much more private and enclosed. It's actually the perfect sort of winter garden. So when it's cooler, you still get beautiful 
warm sun in the evenings and afternoons. The kitchen is certainly the heart of the home. It's a, a hero piece in the design uh, and it's well suited to the clients who are avid entertainers. The scale of the kitchen accommodates large groups. Um, it's about 4.2 metres long and there's seating um, available for about six people and also it's very open so uh, you can circulate around it easily and it's also centrally located in the rear pavilion. The main materials used in the house are natural oak, dark stained oak, aged brass, Venetian plaster and some sort of bronze elements and steel that reference the 1940s but actually were more grand in scale than they probably would have been previously. And the reproportioning of those details helped connect them to the more modern flavour at the back of the house. I'm most proud of how unified this project is, uh, from the finest detail right through to uh, the planning and the sort of greater architectural gestures. I feel that the house is resolved on all sorts of levels.